you had a question about coaching. You, you, yeah. Let's get into that for a minute. Okay. What was your question about coaching about? Well, I think there's one of my favorite things to talk about and having, you know, being an athlete and, and raising athletes is there's a disconnect between parents, coaches, and athletes out there. And, you know, in the club sports world where our kids are being raised, right? I don't, and for us, it's volleyball. You coach club volleyball. Ashley coaches club volleyball. But there's, you know, in any sport, soccer, basketball, water polo, swimming, whatever, these club sports, what is it? Because we're not talking about a huge number of kids that are going to the NBA or playing professional tennis or whatever. What is it on that club level as parents and coaches that we really hope these athletes get out of their experience? What are we, because I think if we connected on that, Mm. there wouldn't be as much angst in that triangle. Right. between parents coaches and athletes but i don't think anybody's asking the question what do we what do we hope for our athletes to get all right well i'd like to give you an answer in 60 seconds mm-hmm. and when the 60 seconds is up yeah. let's continue this dialogue but i feel like if I'm, I'm i bang it out like this i'm more productive for my audience yeah. listening and i stop going um all, all the freaking time so 60 seconds That's, there's my clock All right. So in the club system, in in this case, we're talking about volleyball. We we could be talking about a lot of things, baseball, basketball, all kinds of club levels. A lot of uh, clubs have a policy where like parents aren't allowed to talk to coaches because sometimes they're they're too emotional. And sometimes we have this policy. You take 24 minutes and you send a text to the athletic uh, program director and this and that. Um, The problem is that's the wall, the wall, because the wall that parents aren't allowed to interact with coaches is keeps everybody safe but at the same time there's there's them it doesn't the quality uh, and, the, and the improvement of the child is, is also blocked right yeah um ruth nelson she has a a, a oh, system yeah. called bring your own parents where the parents are assistant coaches they're ball people and this and that they understand that whatever they watch they, they sit there and they watch how how she coaches and they learn and then they have dialogues i myself at la volleyball club i'm the only coach in the club that has an open door policy but the open door policy is this Whatever answer I give you, you have to be able to take it. So the the answer so the answer is twofold. One, coaches have to be comfortable in their own skin where they're watched. You know, they're yeah. um, and th- in fact the entire last season I had a gym where the parents would just sit and watch the whole practice. So uh, Evolution, Redondo, mm-hmm. Duncan Avery's kids, they watch. And on the beach, of course they're gonna watch, right? right. And the summer. And so the coaches have to be comfortable in their own skin and their ability where, where if they feel like someone's watching all the time, it's good. They want them to watch because they're good. And the parents have questions and they have to be able to handle the answer and walk away. Yeah. And if it's not their, the answer they're looking for, then take their kid with them. Yeah. But, but they have to be able to accept answers that, that they don't want to hear, right? Yeah. And that's been that's why J.O.'s Jason Olive, my, my, my program director, tells coaches to stay away from that because a parent can groom you on that nonsense. Right. Uh, um, they really can. So, yeah, like play nice until mm-hmm. until they're fattening you up for the kill. That's what I mean by grooming. Uh, you. Uh, yeah. um, but for me, I you as a coach, you have to have enough experience to know when a parent is asking you a question that they're inherently curious and they're, right. they're looking for an answer to, to answer together. Or if they're asking you a question, would they ever have the answer in their mind and they're waiting for you to give them the wrong answer? Why did my daughter play? Well, she wasn't players. That's not true. So 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 it's one of those things. That's that's the reason why there is that wall. Right. So for sure. Th- so the answer is twofold. One, coach, coaches be comfortable in your own skin. I'm over there. And two, answer uh, parents, handle the answers that you don't want to hear. Because yeah. at the end of the day, the coach the coach knows what the hell they're doing. Don't come, don't 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 roll up on me talking about this is fourteen. They're, you know, they're in this hormonal thing in their youth. No. no, if you've been coaching for a decade, you you've, yeah. This isn't this isn't new parents. This isn't new territory for coaches. Yeah, it's not like just because it's your kid and you're going through that experience doesn't mean the coach lacks lacks the knowledge, experience, or will or 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 interpretive interpretive um um. Uh, of evaluation of where that kid is yeah. they're probably in, in many ways they're better than you are <laughs> you yeah. know and, and so but that's the answer to your question there has to be a a, a humbling on both sides humbling. of that aisle yes the coach has to be arrogant enough to know that whoever's watching he doesn't care but humble enough 
to to, uh, be open to new ideas. And the parent has to be able to take answers they don't want to hear. Yeah. And I think there's two things that comes down to, I mean, there's probably more than that, but the two things that come to my mind are for parents to realize it's more about their kid's journey Mm -hmm. and, and, and ask themselves if they're overly attaching to their child's journey in sports Mm. And and the second one for coaches Ooh. is to ask themselves how attached they are to the athlete's development and not their own ego. Right. right. So if you can get those two things right, then I think you heal that relationship a lot. And and it, in the end, what we're trying to do is benefit benefit the athlete and then raise kids through sports so if your kid is passionate about a certain sport and they're spending that much time playing it what that really is is a development for their life right so what are the things they're learning outside of the technical aspect of sport that are making them a better human being right because if you're passionate about something that's your roadmap for how you're going to become a better person and that's what we're really trying to raise at least that's my theory so hey people on the podcast if you're <laughs> waiting for us to talk about this <laughs> sorry you had to wait an hour <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love i love being a, a podcast host. Uh, um yeah sorry you had to wait an hour for to get to the good stuff and the most important stuff our kids right mm. so yep, yeah sure. uh, um and it's weird because living vicariously through your kids, there's no middle ground. It's like really, really good or it's really, really bad and nothing in between. Isn't it yeah. just crazy? Yeah. Like, Instead of just like being there for them and writing, like embracing the highs and mm-hmm. loving those moments and then realizing that the challenge is where they're like, where the gold of your, the bond of your relationship yeah. is built. Like, you don't just get to have high highs. They're going to have those days that suck, that, like, you're so challenged. But that's where the bond is built. Right. It's not when they're winning the championship. But that's that's the importance of club vol- of club sports. Exactly. Not club yeah. volleyball, club yeah. sports. Yeah. The other reason is, and this is something I wanted to say on a general level, the first time that your child ever deals with a, a, a meaningful loss, most likely is in, is in a sporting event. Yeah. They're a little too young to be burying, you know, parents or grandparents or whatever. But the first meaningful loss on on that scale. Mm-hmm. Um, you almost hope that's what their first meaningful yeah. loss is. It's a great place to learn. But dealing with it, yeah. you know, yeah. is in a sporting event. Yeah. Handle it. Compartmentalize. When do you hold your head up? Yeah. Uh, do you do it when people's watching? Do you, do you behave a certain way to put yeah. on a front? Do you... Do you, is it okay to cry? Is it, is it yeah. you know, do you want people, are you, do you need to be alone for this moment? Do you need a moment alone or, or can someone take those moments with you? Yeah. These are, these are, these are things that shape a kid's personality. In a huge uh, um, way. Or, or changes it for the better or for worse. Yeah. All right. And depending on the level that they rise to in sports, mm-hmm. those lessons they learn younger when you might think they're too le- too young to yeah. learn them, yep. the earlier you start with that value-centered, fundamental, character-driven stuff, yep. you hope they have the talent to get to a, the highest level they can get to. Right. But they're going to handle that higher level better if you're building that character and that value system yes. from a young age. And there's some things you want them to be themselves. You get that because you right. don't want, you're not trying to re- 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 repress no, or depress a, a self-expression. Right. Right. But, but you can but, be passionate and still be a good but you gotta teammate. you got to be real, man. Yeah. You gotta be, I'll give you an example. Natalie Miskowski. She's at UCLA. I used to coach her at Endless Summer. Yeah. And she, um, she's, you know, wound up at, a, uh, I think, Elite or whatever, like her senior year, maybe or her 17s or whatever. But I know cutting the ribbon, doing a construction, whole other conversation. Um, but, you know, AVP first, she's in the final. She's on center court and she lost. And, and, and it was one of these things where she was hysterical because she wanted to be, she needed her moment alone, didn't want people to talk to her, which unfortunately it was included to the coach. Mm-hmm. And, and I waited for her to do her thing. And she, she, she'll remember this because she got a little bratty. But the problem was it was on center court and, you know, you had recruiters watching and this and that. And and um, I waited 24 hours just to talk to her about that. I said, look, first of all, you ever do that to me again, you find yourself another coach. I'm not having it, <laughs> which is I, I guess is what she did. But um, um, <laughs> no, but I said, second of all, you 
you're, you're saying I want to be this elite college player. You're saying I, I want to be able to do this. And it's not just on court things you have to deal with. You have to be able to take coaching under under circ and post coaching under circumstances which um which in your current situation doesn't seem manageable. You have to find a way to make that be manageable. If you want to be um at this elite level, division one uh, yeah. or whatever and this and that. And that was a conversation I had with her um, that I waited 24 hours to too because I, it was just it was just weird like watching her be emotional and try to yell at me on center court and all that stuff um and um yeah she got it and I look at her she's in her junior year right now she's on the pair too I think her record's 30 and 9 awesome. on UCLA right That's you know awesome. they made it to the finals uh, albeit a Stein um benched I didn't start her in the NCAA the, in the tournament hmm. And there was a transfer student from LSU that he decided to go with, but I don't. Honestly, I don't think Stein would have won or lost uh, uh, with that, right? You, either, you know, at that, that at that point in time, either you're good enough to beat USC at the end, or you're not. Yeah. You know, and and, and Dane. Well, and at that level, yeah. on, it's, it's 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 any given day. Right? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a couple of points here and there. Those matches are. But that's a great example, though, yeah. right? This is a girl For who's sure. like, uh, sure. don't, don't, don't talk, don't talk to my honor. And I'm just like, you girl, you, I'm a coach. You lost your, you, you lost your damn mind. And this is something you're gonna have to deal with, or, or, you, you'll be, or, or that program that you're in, you'll be out of there faster than than, than crap yeah. through a goose. Right. You'll be and, out. Of, you will be out of there. <laughs> well, and my favorite thing to watch all the way through this, because we started this on the club sports level, but if you mm -hmm. go all the way up to the professional ranks and you watch the best players in the world, win or lose, the people that you love to watch and the people that seem the happiest playing mm -hmm. their sport Damn. come out as the most gracious losers. And they LeBron hate James. to lose. LeBron they hate James. to lose. Venus it's, Williams, yes. you see her, her statement after the first round of Wimbledon? Yeah. Freaking awesome. I like that. And I like that she was honest. She was honest. And, and watching an athlete that's played a sport for that many years, that's who these kids, I, that's who they need to be listening to. When you see that level of graciousness and that level of self-awareness and they keep coming back to play, like that is just my favorite thing to watch. That's I my jam. That's what you I say. That's my, that's my jam. <laughs> no doubt. Oh, hot damn. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and I, when you see the, the best athletes in the world do that, like LeBron, like the biggest time I had respect for LeBron was he got he got 4-1 by the San Antonio Spurs, but shook hands, congratulated people, and they had the camera, like, watch him walk out, head up the exact same way, head head high, like, like, a, like a true, a true professional, a true mensch, you know, and he gets a lot of criticism because of what other people say about him when he himself is just... You know, being oh, the, he, he oh he thinks he's the goat. Oh, he's not the goat. Jordan's the goat. It's like look, that's not a conversation he's having right now. He if you, you the competitor in you, when you're in the best sport in the world and you're among the best in the, in the world, if someone asks if you're the best in the world, you have to say yes. Yeah, you're not getting to that. Level. Well, a, a, a certain type of athlete has to say yes. You Agreed. know, some people will be and like, I'll be oh, honest, that's not. I understand mm -hmm. why that's who he is that's not my favorite kind of athlete right but i don't like false humility either like i want like oh yeah hell yeah it's here it is <laughs> here's trevor actually really cool video and spin that Ready? Best player in the world. Are you the best player in the world? Yes. 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 Did you see the end? Yes. I'm going to show you again. Are you Watch his eyes the on the third zoom in. Yes. Sorry. Watch yes. the third one. Yes. Did, did you see that that little moment you like player in the world? like you got me you, you you know I'm like there's this thing in the in, in the corner of his eye mm -hmm. like you made me say it <laughs> you made me say it so um I yeah. get I get yeah. it I get yeah. having to believe it and because they all believe it it's just you should, do you, the you question is do you just say it level. or are you, are you honest with the public and and, and throw and throw it out there for them to criticize. Uh, and and stand and tall then not care. and stand tall yeah, like LeBron care. did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For sure. But and most of them don't say that because well, they, if they say that they they're not ready for the blowback if it doesn't happen. Yeah, but who's criticizing? Not anybody that's out there playing them. No. So who cares? No. Right? I mean, I wish I was that 
on one level. I mean, anyone that hasn't played at that level, we're watching it because mm-hmm. we're in awe of what they can do. I love watching sports because there's always someone better. Yep. But when on I- any given day at that level, you could be your you could be the winner. So why wouldn't you believe it? Yep. Right. When I played in Germany, uh, what I did unwittingly or not, I don't know if I meant to do this, but it, it historically happened. So warm ups. When we're doing warm ups, you know, I get a hit and just hit, you know, throw on straight down and then there's some music. So I'm walking around and then, then I start doing this. Boom, <laughs> boom. And the fans, like the audience starts, the fans start watching me. So and I'm, I'm, I do a twirl. I do like a little spin. And what I didn't know or what I, what I was doing unwittingly or not was attracting a whole bunch of attention where like the audience is like, if this guy's doing all this, he better be good. And. It was cool because I was ready to deal with the results. It's not like I was one of those people that would play the victim where this guy, everyone was like, oh, this guy's dancing around and he sucks. I, 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 if I suck that day, I, I, I could take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what it did for me in a beneficiary uh, manner is that it put this amount of pressure on me knowing that if I make mistakes, uh, um. It's gonna it's gonna stick out three times more, but yeah. but, but that, that pressure you put you on up. yourself made you perform, yes. made you um uh, um pursue perfection, right? And well, that's what the best athletes use pressure, yeah, in a beneficial way, right? And mm. that's really fun to watch too, right? I um I have this quote uh, that I use for all my kids, and it's that's gonna change because I just won coach of the year for all 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 the other reasons that go beyond my coaching, uh, um. Uh, gut, you know, my foundation. It, it 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 goes against it. It was about how you play the game instead of winning or losing. <laughs> yeah. You know. So my quote is this: um, "Greatness is man's failed attempt in his pursuit of perfection." Yeah. Greatness is achieved when man, one man or woman, if you will, or they, uh, um, achieves uh, 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 fails because you. you 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 can never ever be perfect. No, no. You I mean, so you fail at perfection, but you cement your greatness. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, I'm actually gonna do a picture of the trophy because it means something to me, and I I don't mean to get all local level on this podcast that everyone sees on this bigger scale, but I took a little video at the beginning. I'll, there I'll it throw is. It I'm zooming on, my on it. So, I got this trophy from LA LA. Los Angeles volleyball, right? And um, I had this speech, and you'll appreciate this speech because I want you to take over because you're, you're you're Wendy Jones. Everybody is the last of the red hot power women. She got a son at Stanford, had a daughter that, you know, outside right. hitter at Stanford, a former Oppo right now at Oppo, right? Yeah. And your daughter played for Hector at Texas Christian Beach volleyball, so yep. she's just Graduated spout. She just spout. She she was just spouting them out. Power women. So I have this quote. Um, and it's always kept everyone around me humble. Uh, Bill Parcells says, you, you are what your record says you are, right? Um, one of his other favorite quotes is, you can't be a prima donna and lose. You can be a prima donna and win, but you can't be a prima donna and lose. So there are a lot, when I'm around people who are str- kind of strutting their stuff, whether it's club, whether it's AVP or whatever, and they walk around like they're the shiznick or whatever, when you say out loud, you are what your record says you are, they just, everybody just snaps to whips back whips back to normalcy calm yourself right Mm -hmm. because it was always everyone is saying like unless you're that you can't walk like that so and that was important to me because at the end of the day amen i love nobody cares work harder right because i felt like if you didn't try to pursue that that perfection you will never be great but I got this trophy because with this team that I was coaching, it was a developmental team, got knocked down so much. Knocked down here. You know, we, we, we fight and we, we move up levels, get knocked down, knocked down, and just kept coming back. Just just this constant pressure in every tournament, even bad ones, that made everybody just get, say, this guy's coach of the year. And I didn't get it from um, 
having a 38 and one record for that high school team. I didn't get it for helping, you know, a small school in New York make the final four. I didn't get it for helping John Mayer, you know, the WC um, at LMU uh, help him uh, in, in his path to winning the WCCs, beating Pepperdine and getting invited to the NCAA. All, none of these uh, or didn't happen, you know, getting three coaching three teams into the main draw because that's what my record says I am. Right. That this trophy meant more than that. Yeah. And I wanted I'm only bringing this up because you as someone that's coaching that I want you to um, actually talk a little bit to our audience about um, things that go beyond the winning and, and losing. Yeah. Maybe maybe on, on no, your I, level, maybe it's more of a sisterhood thing because you're a woman player, too, or or just on some level. No, just think, just explore it with me. I, I, I think good coaches, mentors really just help people unlock what what's already inside of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's the thing is like beyond the technical game, which is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. We all have qualities within us that sometimes we need people to help us kind of excavate. And I think that's what good coaches do. Right. Like really help a, help a kid see what they're good at. Help them. Everyone's got a way to lead. You could be a quiet leader. You could be a, you know, for me, I always talk, tell people I, I, I walk around gyms and look for the gentle giants because that was what I was, right? The middle blockers that you're like, oh, God. Like, every like, sport. You could be so every powerful. sport. The giants are meant a few In, words. Right? Like, you could be so powerful. But you, they don't know that yet. Yeah. So those good coaches help kids find that. How do you want to lead? How can you be a leader? And that's what's so great about team sports is yeah. you, you can't, you can take it. Six all stars. Ashley and I were just talking about this yesterday. If you got a bunch of attitudes, you're not going to win. Mm -hmm. You're not going to win. You're, and you're not even going to have fun. Like, no. how do you, how does a good coach learn to, you know, help kids manage their egos and find the, the deeper meaning and why they're showing up? Right. And parents, like, if they're just dragging them there and your kid's not passionate about it, if you're having to fight with them, like, why are you paying for club sports? Right. Like, don't make it about you. And I've always, on the level, I've always had that in my toolbox. It was just the, the order yeah. of priority. The order of priority, my common denominator is, you know, either, look, you, you can, you're having a bad day or you're having trouble serving or you can't do this, you can't do that. At the end of the day, you can either you do it or you don't. And if you do it, we'll win. And if you don't, we'll lose. You know, all the, all the rest of this stuff is whatever. Yeah. And, and I've always been a cold fish like that, mm -hmm. coaching. But it has produced good players. And at no time did I did I ever have it be in a position where I had to throw out players that couldn't do it. They've all wind up ended up doing it. It's just that, you know, there are other coaching approaches that would have made it easier for them. And maybe maybe more accelerated or maybe not. But I knew this way was working for me. Yeah. You know, but it was just ironic that for the guy like me who predicated his, his foundation on you are what your record says you are, I'm like, I've been coaching since nineteen ninety eight and I only a coach of the year. I've only won that once, mm -hmm. you know, and when you're coaching, you don't care because coaches out there and all the coaches will agree when you're out there coaching, you're not thinking, oh, my God, when I get when I come back from Vegas, I'm going to get coached here. That's not what you're thinking. You're thinking about the kids. You're thinking about them getting better. You're thinking about the, co the collective unit. You're thinking about the other coaches who you're helping and are helping you around you. Yeah. And then as a distant third on a month that starts with a letter R, right, you care about the parents. Right. So, um, yeah. And it's so weird. It's only happened like Madison Square Garden uh, yeah. gave me coaching in 2014. That was the only time. Uh, and that took a 38 and one record. So, but I've always been in the mix. I've turned around these programs and I'm like, ah, Jason should get it, but he doesn't care about it as much as that person cares about it. So I've always been passed over because my level of caring about it, or at least the illusion of that, uh, um, people thought that it, it would have meant less to me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like John Mayer, right? 2021, John Mayer, uh, LMU beach coach, won 30 games. He doesn't care if he gets coached here because to him it's about the players, right? Yeah. It, it meant more. It meant more to um, Fuller, Andrew Fuller. So Andrew Fuller won. <laughs> you know, it wasn't the right result, but it was. It was the. It was kind of the right result. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't get it. There's, there's some, you know, as as always, there's politics and everything, I know. and I don't really know the ins, ins and outs of no. all of that. No, but I, I'm gonna before you even say yeah. that there are so many people deserving of that. <laughs> if that's if that's no. the next thing, that, okay, good. No, I was gonna say no because there's some that is true, uh, but in years that where it's not a close call. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're much more attached to that race yeah. than than I was. Because, I'm not anymore. After yeah. after that happened, I don't I don't watch it anymore. I, I don't. You know, I'm like, fine. You got you guys lost another one. You guys lost a real one because of that. I don't care about you guys anymore. Yeah. You lost a real one. Yeah. You know, congratulations. Mm. Well, I think the best coaches, yeah, like you said, the best coaches are coaching for the athletes. They're not coaching for the award. And if the award comes, great. But, you know. But after years, it means I'm telling. What I'm trying to tell you, is as decades go by, you, there's, here's. Here's another real thing that a coach ain't mm-hmm. going to say out loud. Oh, it's just not me. It's the players, right? That's what we say. No. After, I've been doing this since 1998. There Coaches. is, I'm going to be real. There's every coach out there that would be like, I, it would be nice if I won one of those. It'd be yeah, nice. I Just mean, win one nice of those and move on with life, right? So, so I mean, that's real too. But I, that's sure. what I'm trying to say. People are kind yeah. of playing themselves and they're like, oh, it's, it's all about that. It is all about that. It's, I'm talking about order priority. Yeah. Like coach of the year should be at the bottom. Yeah. But when you hit, when you get to the bottom, well, and but when you finally, when you, you when you it. start checking off those boxes from top to bottom, yeah. when you get to that bottom, yeah. <laughs> I'm being real here. Come on. Yeah, every, people stop lying to yourselves. You, it would be nice. The years that you put in to be recognized for that. Stop lying to yourselves. <laughs> uh, this is what this, I can't lie. This is the option podcast. I cannot lie to myself. <laughs> You know, and well, I everyone, certainly can't lie to Wendy Jones because she'll know. <laughs> Everyone's got an, uh, you know, a healthy ego is 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 a good thing, right? Nice. It's just when you get over identified, it is nice. It's nice to be recognized. Right. It's nice to win awards, if, especially if you worked for them. Right. When you work for them and then you're recognized, that's this is the best of both worlds, right? And, and it's tricky out here, right? Yeah. I mean, well, there's politics in everything. No, because out here the validation game is what it's all about. It's not. It's a game I don't want to play, but it's in the game. It's a game I'm always in the middle of, and and and. Ah, it just, feels so much better to step out of that game. Yeah, it's disgusting. If you like what you're doing every day and you want to get up and do it, mm-hmm. that's when I say this that's, too shall pass. That's my jam. Yeah. Oh wait, you say it again? Yeah, this too shall pass. When this you have those days pass. where you feel like. You need some recognition or you need somebody to realize how hard it is or what you're doing. You, you know, find a way to do something that you love to do. Take a break and come back to it the next day. You'll feel different. You really will. And you know what? That kind of positive energy yeah. starts generating people around you that want to be around you. That's right? right. Because of the, the beach volleyball thing. I met a lot of friends, dude. You know, God bless Jeff Samuels. Big, big shout out to Jeff Samuels, who's always loyal to me. You know, that dude, you know how loyal he is? He's so loyal. That the qualifier for Huntington, yeah. Like Jason asked me if I could um do a clinic. I had to sub in for a clinic, so I usually I'm usually there with Jeff for main draw for for all of that. So he comes right, and I'm and I look at the bracket, and I'm just like, wow, first round's interesting. Amato has been killing people. The, Jeff could could mess around and lose that. Uh, second round, who knows? But last round, the play-in, the one seed was Sam Schachter, mm-hmm. who represented Canada for the the Olympics in Rio, and Travis Muir right. So I'm like, even if he gets that far, he ain't winning that game. I mean, I said, but as far as like Styles making matchups, if he was going to win, it, it would be that seed. But I didn't think he was going to win. So I'm coaching and then and he he calls me and I'm like, hey, you want to go out and karaoke? He's like, no, I got to go to sleep. And I'm like, why? He's like, because I'm playing tomorrow, you idiot, you know. And he's just, and you're coaching too, right? I said, yes. Oh, yeah. Right. But that's how loyal he is. He, yeah. I, you know, because he remembers I was there when he, so you've got a he good had eye, rough Jay. patches. You have yeah. a, and, and you have a good eye. Yeah. Like, I love listening to you, coach. Yes. I learn a lot of stuff about beach volleyball when I listen yeah. to you. So, hey, you know, it's, it's the last two episodes ago were, were about me pouring out hatery to the to a certain people that didn't appreciate the work you put them not but today is about today's is wendy jones today's half glass full <laughs> in that right. regard and i am very very happy with la volleyball club i'm very happy to be coaching some some people I'm, i got for the, everyone listening to the mother low tournaments the 50th anniversary it's, it's oh, aspen that's... colorado um and it's the same weekend as chicago so because Chicago doesn't have a qualifier, like pretty much everyone who's not in that draw is going to be in there for the 50th anniversary. That's really cool. Um, they're doing a broadcast. I'll give you the information on that in the coming months. Uh, Randy Stokeless mm-hmm. 
will be the color commentary. Randy, the king of the beach, uh, Sinjin, right? Yep. Uh, Rolo Vincent. Mm -hmm. And they asked Randy, they said, who do you want to be your play-by-play -play guy? Um, he says, that guy with the Yankee hat. So Right on. Jason and Randy are back again. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, pays to do exhibition videos, guys. Qatar <laughs> versus Try and Trevor. Look it up. That, that's, that was the most fun I've ever had talking about a game that meant nothing. No money on the line, no, not a tournament. Well, that's what's Just, great about living Right, people here. walking by on the strand, World don't class. even know who these four guys are, yeah. beating the living heck out of each other. So fun. <laughs> so fun. I might have to do this podcast in two sections, because I think people who are interested in this that might oh, not no. be interested that's in the other, what, you know? Agreed. We so do maybe we do a part harder. one and two or whatever. But that's why I love your podcast, Jay, because... The two things that I can sit around and talk about all day are sports and politics. Like, yeah. That is just too fun. Because <laughs> so. yeah, we're getting right back into politics. <laughs> so then I'm we're going to make it three episodes. Yeah. You're doing a three-parter. Why not? Three, 40 <laughs> <We> minutes. <Yeah. laughs> there you go. One that's going to get flagged. and <laughs> <laughs> Make it harder to find us. One is like, Jason's a mensch, and the other one's like, wait a minute. <laughs> mm, my goodness. All right, Wendy. Wendy might love you guys, but me... You know, I love you guys too. Fine. I'm not going to go through that spiel. I love you guys to death. I love you guys to pieces, all right? For all of you at home, for all of you watching this, from my man Eric Anderson who joined in on our comment section, great to have an absolute coaching mensch uh, join it. us, all, albeit through textual means. Uh, this is Wendy Jones right there. I'm Jason DeBeas, <laughs> tech in my own show. Uh, where to hit my music? Stay with me after this. But for now, thank you guys so much. This might come in two parts. Uh, um, but for now, thank you so much. We're out of here. Peace. Thanks, Jay. Come check out the Option Podcast on OptionDB.com. It's also available on iTunes and Spotify and on YouTube under the NY Varsity Sports Handle. You're going to love what you hear.